You're listening to Bing Jang 91.5 and Tony Graham. And now it's time for the Mayoral Report with uh, the Mayor himself in the studios today in Studio 2, Matthew Dickerson. G'day, Matthew. Good morning, Tony. Great to be chatting to you again. Hmm. Always good to be talking about mayoral items. Mayoral items. Well, getting into the standing uh, committees, um, which uh, there was a meeting about that, or the standing committee meeting was on last Thursday. Correct. One of the subjects that came up was the potable water situation in Geary and Dunno. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, certainly. There was a process there where you may remember there was a boil water alert on in Geary that lasted for approximately 13 days in Geary where people had to boil their water. And there was some discussion from councillors at that particular point in time whether or not we should try and work out some sort of compensation for people that were impacted by that. Following that, there was also then a boil water alert that went through Dubbo for a longer period of time and obviously affected a lot more people. We asked the staff to go and do a report on what it would cost to give some sort of rebate and how much that rebate might be for some of those people, for example, in Geary. And so the report that came back to the standing committee meetings last week talked about how much it might be and there were some calculations done around how much extra it might have cost those residents to boil their water, the, the amount of water they needed to use. So the figure that was arrived at there Changed for obviously different residences, but maybe in the order of four or five dollars per household. But the process to give that money back to people, to give that compensation back, in terms of the processing from a staff perspective, was going to cost more than the amount of money that we would be giving back to those particular residents. So in the end, council through that committee process made a recommendation, which will be fully ratified at the council meeting next week. But the recommendation was not to go ahead and give compensation back to anyone that was affected by those bore water alerts. And that's fairly consistent across the state. We couldn't really find any other examples of councils that had given any money back, any compensation, when a community was under a bore water alert. Okay. Now, according to uh, the, the summary paper here, looks like someone's disabled the car spaces in Warren Street and Arthur Street. Do you, have you found out who's responsible for that? <laughs> Well, as it turns out, no one, Oh, because they were being used. And so that was a part of the process in terms of looking at car spaces, looking at how much car spaces are used and the utilisation. And in that analysis, we found that there were two disabled car parking spaces that essentially weren't being used at all, not being used by people with a disabled sticker, not being used by general people, obviously, because that would be illegal. And so the decision, again, the recommendation from the committee meeting through the council will be to remove those and make them normal car parking spaces. Mm, fair enough. So um, when it comes to the livestock markets, uh, what's the situation with that? What's happening there? There's been some developments over a period of time with that. Um, so what's the latest update? The livestock markets are absolutely fantastic for Dubbo. They inject a, a huge amount of money into our economy from people coming and using those. People from the region use those livestock markets. We're always looking at the various businesses of council and the regional livestock markets is one of those businesses, one of those business functions of council to see if they're being run in the best possible way, in the most efficient way. So there's a review going on at the moment as we speak to look at that whole process there. Now, many years ago in my time previously on council, there was some discussion about whether we sold the livestock markets, whether we did a long-term lease for the livestock markets. In the end, the decision that was made at that particular time was to continue owning and operating the livestock markets as we do today. But even the charging scenario, the way sales are charged, the way that livestock are charged in that process, and the amount of revenue that generates for council and all of that, is that the best model? So it's really a review, staying with a blank sheet of paper, what's the best way to run those livestock markets? What should we do? How should we run them? And basically going through that process to come out the other end to have some recommendations through to council to say, here are some things we should look at, here are some things possibly we should do, and then it will be up to council to make some decisions on that. Yeah, sure. And you've made a major announcement about green power and how that's going to save council money. So you might like to explain that. We have some different contracts, some different electricity contracts at council. One of them is called the small sites contract, which unsurprisingly, is for the smaller sites. Yep. And that contract typically costs council in the order of a million dollars a year, a little bit less than a million dollars per year. That contract, the current contract we've got at the moment, expires at the end of this year. So we went out to the market to get a new contract, and we typically do these over a 10-year time period because we believe we get better prices when we go for that longer time frame. So we went out to the market and said we want some tenders for servicing our electricity supply agreement for all these small sites. And we said we want 
the best price we can possibly get and the best price we can get if we have a condition that says you must have 100% renewable power as part of that supply agreement. So the tenders came back, we went through that tender process and the decision we made was to go with Shell Retail and use their green power option, which is 100% renewables. The saving, which is an interesting word around that because many people think that when you go to renewables it costs more, but it was actually a saving. The saving on that is approximately $120,000 per year over the current contract that we've got now. So over the 10 year time frame, we'll save about $1.2 million and we'll also be doing what we believe is the right thing from an environmental perspective. Okay, and uh, there's some interesting processes happening now in Dubbo in relation to auctioning land. Uh, a new kind of a process, I believe. Absolutely new kind of a process. This is something where council has been involved in land development for a number of years. We've got Keswick Estate, which is a large parcel of land we bought back in the 70s, and we're developing that, or have been developing that over many years. There's another 52 blocks that we're selling at the moment. Now, normally, we would just do those sales by a private treaty. Council would come up with a price, they go to the market and try and sell those by a private treaty. In this particular scenario, we believe the real estate market is very hot, and we didn't quite know the exact price to go for those. So council made a decision to put all 52 blocks out to an auction or through an auction process to sell those blocks by auction. So we had the first auction last Friday where we had 17 blocks. Next auction will be this Friday, another 17 blocks and the following Friday, 18 blocks. We went out to the market, got some quotations for an auctioneer. Uh, an auctioneer from Ray White was chosen from that process. And so the first auction was run last Friday and it was a combined online and physical auction. So there were people in the room bidding at an auction like you'd normally expect to see, but people were also bidding online. And again, we wanted as many people involved as possible because you'll get better prices in an auction. The first auction we sold 11 of the 17 blocks. I was a little bit disappointed by that. I would have liked to have sold all 17 blocks, but there were some little glitches in the process in terms of getting people registered and just some few mechanics, I suppose, that will get better for the next auction. Again, this is the first time We've done this and first time we've done this en masse. First time we've done a combined online and physical auction. So this Friday, when we've got another 17 blocks up for sale, hopefully we'll have ironed out some of those little issues and we'll have a, a better auction where hopefully all 17 blocks will be sold. And then the third auction the, the following week for those last 18. Plus we might introduce some of those blocks that weren't sold initially. All right. And did you bring any potholes with you today? <laughs> I <laughs> certainly went over a few potholes on the way to Wellington today. Or did you fill them? You would have had plenty to fill them in with, I take it. I had nothing to fill them in oh, with, right. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 there is no doubt about it that roads are a problem, not just in this LGA. And before this last series of rain events, we had an estimation that our infrastructure backlog for roads was approximately $40 million. Now, ignore the $28 million that's in our budget this year for the roads. If we had a blank check, and someone wrote out a check and said $40 million, we believe that would have been enough a few weeks ago to get all the roads to an acceptable standard. But now, after this latest series of rain events, that figure would be even higher. But again, there is $28 million being spent on the roads in our budget for this year, but that won't, that won't fix the problems that we've got. The problems are large, the problems are expensive, and the problems aren't just in this LGA. The problems are absolutely across the state mm. that I'm acutely aware of and outside the state absolutely that I'm aware of as well. Yeah, and I know the state government has declared, um, I'm not quite sure what they call it, but it's sort of like a state of emergency situation, yeah. which allows them to, well, triggers them to be able to release funding towards these sorts of problems. So has the, have you had any updates about that? So that's a, a natural emergency. Yeah, that's what natural it is. Natural disaster. disaster, yes. Yeah, natural disaster. Yes. And so that, the main thing that unlocks is for individuals to be able to go and make certain claims. I've actually asked what that will do for council. Does that make a significant difference to what council can do? Can council access more funds because of that? I haven't got an answer back about that yet, but certainly from an individual perspective, if you've been impacted by that flooding, you can actually go and make your certain claims. You need to be in a natural disaster area to be able to make those claims. Yeah, and this area has been declared such. Correct, absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, all right. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I think that's good. A good coverage, Tony, from the standing committee meetings on Thursday night. Our next council meeting, the last council meeting we had was actually in Wellington. The next council meeting will be back to Dubbo. And so that'll be next Thursday where those recommendations from the committee, so those recommendations there are just that at this stage, not, rec not resolutions of council, they're recommendations. They'll go through to council and often you'll see those go through as they are, but sometimes there'll be some changes and then anything else that comes up 
from that perspective, but the next council meeting we'll have another discussion after that and see what other new things have popped up that affect Wellington residents. Well, thanks very much uh, for your time today, Matthew. Always my pleasure, Tony. Okay. We've been listening to Matthew Dickerson, the Mayor of the Regional Council. Thank you very much, and it's time now to move on with some more music on Binjang 91.5.